Hey guys, how are we? How are you? <laughs> thank you so much for coming. This is my favourite day, so thank you for being with us. Woo! 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 Thank you for being with us. Thank you for spending what was a sunny weekend outside in here. <laughs> yeah. So I apologise, unfortunately we couldn't bring the sun inside. So. Oh, no, it's all right, you've saved better. me a bunch on sun cream, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, I have heard people that have been walking up in the hotels getting sunburned. Yes, yeah. So it kind of it may not work for some people. But what, how has your weekend been, first of all? It's been really good, yeah. Really, it's been sick, really. Yeah. It's been really so cool seeing all the cosplay and like, meeting you guys, and this is like the, the best opportunity we've had to meet fans. So thanks for coming to say hi. And if you haven't, come and say hi. <laughs> yeah. What is that like for all three of you, though, when, you get, when someone comes up to you and they're in a cosplay or you see a group of them all come up in a group class cosplay and you're like, OK, yeah. what's it like? It means a lot. It just, it just goes to show that, you know, we've hopefully created something that can have an impact on someone for them to even want to dress like us. It means a lot, honestly. It just, uh, it's, it, it's just giving back to us and the work we've put and it just goes to show that hopefully the fans, you know, appreciate what we've done. So it means a lot. It's the best. It's the best. I've got, in my immediate vision, I've got an April right in front of me. So yeah. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Yes. Well, ditto. I don't say anything that they haven't already said. It's, it's brilliant. We love it. So let's, let's ask the April a question. No, not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> really catch her off guard. So, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going to pick her up or panel. Or am I? No, we love, we love Sophie. So in terms for each of you then, what has been the experience that you've most enjoyed about doing class? What was the thing that you, when you look back on it in many years' time, although if it carries on, it could be for, you know, you'd be looking back on hundreds, we hope. But <laughs> for now, what is the experience that you've taken away that means the most to you? Um, for us, I feel like the filming itself, like, because it was in during the summer in Cardiff, it was just beautiful and getting to film in the, in the Doctor Who studio and Roy Flock and the cast and crew and down to, you know, the, the rig people and just the people that were doing lunch and it was just a complete family for five months and we just really had the best summer of just filming and just creating something that we really, you know, put our heart and soul into it. So it was just a really fun experience of five months of filming just with your friends and family, really. So, And also, it was class was the thing that kick-started my career it's like th my first big professional job and without it I'd still be making coffees so <laughs> we wouldn't yeah. be here which as well. is fine I'm really good at making coffees <laughs> just so you know um, but yeah just to to feel like like an actor it was for five months doing what you love all day every day meant the world yeah working a job with guys that are as passionate and just as genuinely lovely people, it makes such a difference um, being friends with the people you're working with. Um, yeah. I've never actually, honestly, like oh, even yeah. from... It's true though, it's true. You're it's right. true because we've, yeah. you know, I've been on, a f like from my experience of work and I've been on a few jobs where I've never actually even gone home to another actor's house or <coughs> sort of even... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. He's come back <laughs> to my place many times. <laughs> No, but I mean, like, in terms of, no one's really grabbed me in a sense where I'm like, yeah, I want to I wanna chill with this person, or, yeah. you know, I want to be friends with them after, but from the moment we'd done the read-throughs, at first I was kind of doing my research and trying to see who these actors were, I was searching up people, I remember searching Vivian and there was nothing for Vivian because she'd not done anything before, and I remember finding a Twitter with this girl with like 200 followers, I was like, is this, could this be her? And I was quite worried, but when we went into the read-through and everyone just met each other, I swear to God, from the moment we just first started doing the read-through, it was just like, yeah, this is, this mm. is going to be fun. Every single member of crew said that they'd never seen a cast that was so close, like so genuinely close and cared about each other. Um, which sounds quite cheesy, but it, it was true. They wouldn't have said it if they didn't mean it. And I think, you know, the way that if you've met us, you've, you've seen kind of how much we care about each other and it's... I feel like no it makes a huge difference as well, especially when filmmaking or in, in anything really, but when there's a group of people and like everyone's heart's in the right place, I feel like that's when you create something special. Um, and that's exactly what class was like. Every single person um, just put their heart into it. And 
uh, it's so glad to see that we have like even if it's not like a, a huge huge following but the following that we do have the cult following that we yeah, do you have you guys you guys are really passionate and just you guys just make this experience so special and we wouldn't be here without your support so we really do love you guys for real yeah cry you can cry now <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you mentioned the cult following there now doctor who traditionally has a cult following how were all of you kind of aware how much were you aware coming into this how big the Doctor Who fandom was, and then when was the first time you realised how big the class fandom had become? And what was your reaction to both of those? We had a class fandom before class aired, which <laughs> yeah. was, was awesome. There was, um, there was a lovely group of people in Cardiff. I know one of them's here today. Tom, Tom where is he? Hi, Epic Who. wherever you are. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They're not here! Oh. Okay, take back that shout up. Don't follow his <laughs> <laughs> Don't, please don't follow Epic Who on YouTube. <laughs> Unsubscribe. Um, yeah, but, but they were spreading the word from day dot. When, as mm. soon as the, the class was announced and the, the cast was announced and they were showing up to set. And so then, and kind of already seeing how much they cared about the show before they'd even seen it, um, we were like, huh, this might, we might have something really cool on our hands. And then, obviously, you guys have spread the love and it's thank you yeah it's been awesome. and that gives you an insight as well to the the doctor who fan base because that we got that we yeah. got that reaction so early on because the doctor who fan base is so big and so yeah. dedicated i kind of miss out on a bit of it because i don't have twitter i've only got instagram yeah so i i see like things that that people tag us in and people have been making amazing artwork and um yeah that's that's really cool and you mentioned um, when you all found out and you all got to know you on the series, and you mentioned that there was a class fandom before. For you guys, you knew a while before the rest of us. And if it's your, especially for you, Sophie, as well, it must be really difficult. It's your first job, it's a huge job, you're on a BBC franchise. How did you all kind of keep that secret without actually letting it slip to people? Mm. I wasn't, I tried my best to contain it, but I, I really just wanted to tweet something, but. You did. I, I did, I did tweet something, <laughs> but I didn't That's actually funny. tweet anything. I just like just posted a random picture of a TARDIS and I was like mm, if people clock it in the future yeah. it'd be cheeky but I, did, I just really wanted to say anything but it was just you're so you're king of, oh, of leaking that, like, yeah. Yeah. not even <laughs> really for me because like it wasn't my first job but it was a job I've been working towards my whole life like I've always done a few like an episode or like, started off as an extra and I've always worked towards um, being a lead role in a series or in a feature film or whatever and for it for, to be a lead role in a series in a in a big franchise like Doctor Who, that was just completely above my expectations. So it was just like a complete dream come true for us, it's all of us. And that's why I feel like it was so special for us because no one's, none of the actors, no one on board was sort of like in a, even though they're obviously like Catherine Kelly, she's you know, but Superstar. no one ever felt like you know, everyone was just sort of in the same posi position. Especially like the young actors, we was all so excited because this was like our biggest job so we were just like really proud mm. and just honoured to just we kept each other grounded though because yeah. when we weren't filming even when like in the first few episodes you may have noticed Ram is a little bit covered in blood yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, like screaming crying like all these proper epic scenes and then off screen we're all laughing and joking and um, that family aspect really helped us keep level-headed and, um, yeah. and not get it's too so excited. It's so funny, like, so many times during episode six, we'd actually be, like, doing these intense scenes and there was a moment where we were just, like, corpsing and we would, like, we had these emotional scenes and whenever, like, the camera would get off me, I'd, like, turn around and let out the laugh and then come back into this, like, serious mode. But throughout that whole, it was just so much fun because it was just, like, a bunch of friends trapped. We was actually trapped in a classroom for two weeks. They blacked out all the windows, so there wasn't actually no light in the classroom. And when they took down the lights, the, the blinds, it was lit. We felt like, wow. Um, so it was a really cool experience and so much fun. We had like cupboard full of snacks and, and stuff. So, yeah. Did someone forget to take the empty snacks? Yeah, I think it was like maggots and stuff eventually. No, no. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you notice how like we just always come back to how much we love each other and looks at that the question started off completely different <laughs> and we just, just rambled onto a tangent that's just like yeah we yeah we, we we love each other pretty much i was just gonna let you go with it yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but how difficult was it though to keep a secret like that because for all of you because I mean, as you said to me, your first big job is in yeah. a franchise that all of you would dream of to be in 
So how difficult did you find it, apart from tweeting pictures of the TARDIS, which we got <laughs> It's kind of part and parcel of being an actor nowadays, especially. Like, I've heard stories of people um, having to sign proper non-disclosures um, on... Because uh, it's something like Star Wars, you kind of expect that level of secrecy, but even like oh. small films and small the series. The Doctor Who is mad. Yeah, it's, as an actor now, you have to be prepared to be very secretive until it's been announced. And uh, I know my, my mate Sasha Dewan, who's the, the bad guy in Iron Fist, uh, he had to, he was, uh, he's like the main antagonist. In, he's, I worked with him on the Selfridge on the last series of that. Um, but yeah, he was, gagging to tell someone and he couldn't for months and months and months but it's just part of it now you have to be slightly secretive yeah. uh well when i got the phone call that i'd got the job i was with in company i was with some friends um eating pizza so <laughs> the pizza fell out of my mouth and so did the information that i got the part <laughs> um to a select group and i told yeah I, my mum knew uh that was it though I, but yeah i'm not into like disclosing stuff on online so yeah it was just just a select few of people but even that was hard and I probably shouldn't have done it so <laughs> don't tell on me <laughs> you're filming it <laughs> <laughs> the whole front row pretty much are <laughs> so we're going to open the mics up to questions there are two little microphones in the middle there if you'd like to ask any of our panelists questions feel free to stand by the microphones and you can ask them to be sure. Oh, quick, the whole row's getting out now. But, be kind. Someone's even stopped her camera. Don't be kind. Where'd he go then? To the, to the mic. Oh, oh, oh. They're not leaving. Don't Do worry about this guy. Don't you remember how this works? <laughs> no, I probably forgot. Sorry about this. Okay, well, we start off with the lady with the, over there with the TARDIS t shirt on. Hey. Hi. Oh, um, oh, 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 that's a good question. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing with like in-depth questions, like really good questions like Don't that. Think about this. It's um, <laughs> it's really hard to come up with something like that on the spot. Um, what would Charlie like? Charlie would like something from Scissor, Scissor Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah. I mean. April would like obviously have something with violin, um, the world's smallest violin. <laughs> but Vin Chong to the smallest violin in the world. Um, I'm, I'm re- I, have you finished? Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was it. Bad, I had it? nothing. I was just uh, blagging. I'm, I'm really trying. I'm, I was first thing that came to my mind is like a song that had the word blood in it, but I can't find one. So if you can help, please. <laughs> Make Any song up. titles have the word blood in it? Huh? Sunday Bloody Sunday. That's my song. Sunday, bloody Sunday. There you go. Sunday, bl- bloody every day. Yeah. Yeah, that's my song. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up we have this lady in your two t shirt and. Hey, Jade. Hi. 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 Uh, I have two questions. Have you bought you a present? Uh, oh, is it a fidgety thing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> fidgety thing. <sighs> oh, you're a legend. Oh, my God, no. He needed wow. this during uh, filming. <laughs> She has a question too. Have you watched Torchwood yet? Yeah. I haven't. I still haven't seen it. I watched Torchwood when it came out, um, but there's a. (laughs) But there's a. I watched uh, Miracle Day. I don't remember it being like as rude and sexy as everyone says. Um, I was a kid when it came out, though, so that's probably why (laughs) it scarred me. I've got a fidget spinner. <laughs> <laughs> He's chuffed. It's going to be gold as well. Gay. Is it? Oh, Ooh. oh that's sweet. <laughs> oh, oh, this is a really good one as well. Yeah, oh, no, seriously, thank you so much. That's so mad. Dude, I literally said I wanted one like five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> he, he literally did backstage, I heard him. <laughs> we have a um, to go to there next. Hi. Two, is there anything you want to get out of that for your character or anything in general you want to happen in it? I would like to not be a charcoal monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I think that's fair enough. <laughs> um, I'd, well, I'd like Charlie to really have to deal with his decision and not. It, I mean, I know Patrick wouldn't brush over that uh, choice at the end of the series, but that's got to screw you up a little bit. I'd like him to properly deal with that um, without being too much of a sap about it. Mm. But yeah, I'd like to get, go through that and really explore that because that's, that's some PTSD level <laughs> stuff. I want to see what Quill's baby looks like. Ooh. Because both, Ooh. both um, the baby mama and baby dada, are, they're, they're stuck in human form, but that's not what they actually look like as aliens. So, what, wait, so Prill, Quill looks like a prawn. <laughs> what, and, and the dad looks like, like what? mattress filler. <laughs> I, I don't know what that would look like. Yeah, there you go. Poor cocktail. That's what it's going to be. Poor cocktail! Oh, lol. <laughs> Anything you'd like to see in season two? Uh, uh, I would just like for there to be something different on Ram's face. <laughs> so I'm sure I can arrange I, that, I think that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's so day, you sorry. need to... D- I didn't know the class fan base was this day. <laughs> You you what, you left that one wide open. Or, uh, <laughs> especially after today. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> so we'll go to this young person here. Okay. So Cole Hills. But the stuff that happens in the school seems quite exciting. The KG from time to time, except things do happen in school. That's exciting. Somebody put laxative in all the scan- school canteen food last Friday and gave lots of people diarrhea. But in your school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's really good. I thought that was just school dinners. <laughs> what, what was the most exciting thing that ever happened during your school days? Oh. I don't know if this was in my school days, but I remember someone actually fed pigeons laxatives. Oh, genius idea. That's such a genius idea. It is genius, right? <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> oh. I poured a kind of apple tizer <gasps> on a girl's head once. In the canteen. Just following the canteen. Why? Because um, she started on my friend. Yeah. And she... she <laughs> <laughs> um, there was like... There was the thing that everyone was scared of in my school... Uh, that is an epic ringtone, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, when you were, like, going into the big school, so when you were joining Year 7, everyone was like, oh, my God, I'm going to get hedged, I'm going to get hedged. Basically, there was, um, there was a really spiky thorn bush that, like, lined all the pathways to each classroom. Never had any leaves. It was pointless. It was just dead. But it had giant thorns, so the, the big kids would um, apparently, like, push the Year 7s into it. I don't know if it ever happened, but that was that was pretty aw- awkward. <laughs> you had no next question. Uh, I did, but I don't really know if I want to tell this story. I'll <laughs> oh, go on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you, you do? You might judge me. Um, no, basically, this was actually in primary school. Yeah, I, I, I kind of set the score on fire, and I got excluded. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Cool. <laughs> okay, so now what? now I can tell the story. So basically, I was. I don't the know. I don't, well, it didn't all like burn, but it was my classroom. But yeah, it was it was kind of the school. Uh, but basically, we were sitting. Uh, it was carpet time. I remember, and it was like carpet registered. I don't know what happened, but I got kicked off the carpet, so I had to go in the corner. And I was just sitting in the corner, and I don't know if I had. I think it might have been matches, but I was just like playing with these matches in the corner. And <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew, I knew, I knew this might not. Have been good. But anyway. It caught fire to something like this on the trays and it was like silk and it just s- set fire like honestly in like two seconds. And I was like, miss, there's fire. And, um, <laughs> um, yeah, it was really bad because this, uh, this girl fainted and it just made everything really worse. So, yeah. I just like to point out, which school is that underfunded? They give children matches. No, they didn't. They didn't. I don't know if they gave. I don't know where I got these matches from. See, now I sound like a r- really bad kid. Yes, I got excluded. Oh, you didn't? Yeah. No, I did. I really got excluded. Oh, my God. But I, they let me back in because, like, the head teacher really believed in me and all of these things. But I got excluded for a, for, for a fair amount of time. Jeez. Yeah, but I was in primary school. Well, um, I don't... No, don't clap. <laughs> <laughs> 
you can you can just keep on surprising us. Yeah, no, I thought I'd give you, you know, a good a good story. Yeah, does that is that good enough? Yeah. yeah, I have Sweet. absolutely. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what do you have a story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to think. My the worst thing that I ever did, <laughs> and as you know, I, you can tell I'm a rebel. Obviously, <laughs> um, I was in year eight. Uh, oh no, year nine even. And uh, it was just before Christmas break. Um, it was the last day, and my mates were being idiots um, and the class was like going like kicking the teacher's cabinet while we were waiting for the rest, uh, cabinet the, whatever the, <laughs> it's the cabinet oh um, and because I did uh, I did karate back then quite a lot and they were like oh Greg come and do a karate kick on this so I was like alright so I kicked it and I proper made this huge dent on this cabinet and I lived in fear and guilt <laughs> Throughout the entire Christmas break, I could not sleep. I'd never experienced that level of anxiety. Because I knew when I came back, I was going to be caught. They'd, be, they'd call me out on it. And I, I was terrified. Um, and then it was never spoke of. Randomly. So, um, yeah, that's, a, that's my level of You're gonna get You're going to get a fine rebellion. through the post. <laughs> you're welcome. No worries, dude. Okay, we go over to the other side. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. Um, that was very... They say um, they really like the actors they work with and set and the crew. But let's face it, the best thing about it is the set food. So. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> how, 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 Um, there was actually kind of um, a topic on set. Yeah. Was yeah. Uh, the set food. Every day. We actually, um, there was. Are we oh, going to be you, honest? Did you, you did Doctor Who, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So, so you know. Yeah. Are you are you being sarcastic? No, no. Set food is the best. Really? So I'm asking you, what's your best meal that you had? <laughs> oh. The food that I brought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Ev- um, did we not have like a? Did it? We, we won't talk. We won't mention the name of the company. Yeah, but I'm sure we. What was what we had? Like, well, you we had must have been really lucky. Exactly. You had. Sh- <laughs> yeah, you you must have been really lucky um, because <laughs> a lot of people from like from day one after having the food decided to bring. I'll tell you food. what, I did. I, sorry, I I, I I I I kind of didn't mind it, but a, a lot of people really hated it. Yeah. Um, oh, so there was a time where it got so bad that one of the guys. From the rig, started to bring his own food and do a barbecue, and that was that was, that was the best food. Yeah, the barbecue days. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have a question from uh, this lady here. I was wondering what your favourite scene to film was. Scene to film. Favourite scene to film. <laughs> All of them. Se- se- oh, the s- to to yeah. be fair. I'm actually going to take that because it was an awesome day. <laughs> the, uh, the bedroom scene was really fun. Um, yeah, uh, it was. It was literally me, uh, Jordan and I. We we're in our gowns, our robes, and our like uh, skin-coloured underwear, sort of prepping ourselves to do this scene because um, we knew from when we got the job that we'd have to we'd be doing this and um, so I was like oh my god I've never done a sex scene before I'm very excited to <laughs> um, I'm not uh, yeah I'm very excited um, and so we and they were they were really respectful and everyone's being like oh we'll close the set off we'll do, make sure you're looked after and everything it'll just be a certain amount of people doing it um, and we were just like we, we were pretty chill about it we were like we really don't care. It was just a bit of fun. Um, so we went in, <laughs> went in, and did about an hour of grunting and uh, thrusting <laughs> <laughs> beneath, uh, beneath the sheets. It was yeah. It was literally Jordan and I. Uh, you've seen the scene, I'm sure. Um, and 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 two guys holding up the um, the, uh, the, sheets. the sheets so it wouldn't get on the camera and the one cameraman just like right in our faces <laughs> um, yeah it's not often that you have to do that with the job is it so yeah the sex scene was pretty fun what was your favourite scene? Um, sex scene 
actually, it was probably our stuff in the Shadowkin world. Yeah, like, I remember cool. filming that. We was like, uh, what, do you remember where we was? Uh, it was in the Bracken Beacon. It was in Landilo. In a, in a quarry. Landilo. Huh? Landilo. No, Landilo. <laughs> no, just, Landilo. Just, she's right. No, she's right. <laughs> oh, are you probably saying it correctly, aren't you? Yeah, but, yeah, no, the Shadowkin stuff, we was in, like, the... Um, I can't remember where we was, but it was like really high up to the point that we was actually filming in the clouds. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was that was really fun filming all of that stuff, and obviously all the stuff with Peter in the first episode, where he catches me. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love you forever. <laughs> um, I just I loved working with Kate. I mean, Miss Quill's a badass character, but she's absolutely hilarious, and like obviously. Patrick's written her one-liners incredibly, but Kate would come up with her own Mm -hmm. one-liners. So it was the things that you saw off camera. (laughs) Maybe they'll be like, I don't know, like a blooper blooper or something, but she's hilarious. Like the day, um, episode two, when she was throwing the stapler Mm. at (laughs) Paul Smith, the inspector. Um, (laughs) I've never heard so many swear words yeah. Said so quickly, so often. Yeah, I was all She's amazing. Well, yeah. yeah, anything with Kate. Was they actually brilliant. cut the scene right before she said the swear word, and I can remember what oh, it was. Oh, got some well. filthy stuff going on. But that. she was saying that. some filthy stuff. Filth yeah. bag. <laughs> yeah. She's great. Okay, next question over there. Time. Um, what was your favourite part about playing your characters? Hmm. Uh, I go. On. <clears throat> I really um, liked exploring a different side to like this cocky jock who's really sweet and emotional and has a big heart and can cry and um, can be the one who stands back and lets his girlfriend do the fighting and protect him rather than him being the, the macho What's guy it? that doesn't cry and being the one that's like, no, stand back, I got this. Like, no, it's not that. <laughs> I like the fact that fight. it was like she was being a badass. I was sort of like standing back and moments where you get to see him cry and just like really care about his girlfriends uh, and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, and no, I really liked exploring a sort of emotional side and sweet love inside to, to a typical jock. Yeah. I loved um, April's relationship with her mum was really lovely. Working with Shannon was incredible. And, um, yeah, I'd love to see more of that relationship. Um, but I think my very favourite bit was getting to do all the sword training and getting mm. to do combat training and, and feel like a bit of a superhero was really cool. Uh, for me, um, I suppose it was... The process of creating Charlie was really interesting because, I was saying this to someone earlier, um, it's, it was a real balancing act of different things because he's obviously got to be alien, but he's not got to be too alien that you can't relate to him. It's the same with his level of royalty and people tend not to connect with uh, regal figures too much because there's... There's not many of them. Yeah, there's not many of them. They're just completely alien again. It's finding all these balances and he's still got to be really likeable, but he's still got to be morally grey and um, it was really tricky. And that whole process for me was really... Um, really interesting and uh, taught me a lot so I was really grateful to be able to mix all that and hopefully come out with a decent character and cool. we're on to our next question <coughs> hey what was it like working with Peter Capaldi and seeing the set for the first time hmm. well Peter was awesome of course there's of course. a clip of um of me and Fanny with a GoPro when we see the set for the first time. Or no, it was just me and you were, talk- you were taking me around. Yeah, Is that yeah. you're so fresh, so clean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, um, it was mad to see it, mm. to see it in real life. Because I think we'd, we'd seen drawings and, like, ideas been put together for um, what all the monsters were going to look like, what the sets were going to look like, and, like, um, like, a mood board of our costumes and stuff. So we kind of had an idea before we went in and it was, it was all real, but nothing compares to actually seeing a costume, actually seeing the sets and, yeah. and the amazing monsters that yeah, were that made. Was th- sorry, that was the day we did the photo shoot, mm. wasn't it? Mm. We first saw the set. But it wasn't completely... It wasn't done It was then. just the no. staircase and the lockers mm. that but were in the, then. It was like, that was the first, we all said to each other, it was like, oh my God. This is like, we, knew, we knew we were doing a, a TV show, and obviously, but... When we got there and saw this set being built for us, we were like, 
Oh my god. For yeah. For, for, yeah. So, well, in tech, well, it wasn't for us, but. It was for you. It was for you guys, but <laughs> like th- this was our show, and yeah. we were like, "Oh my god, this this is proper." It was one of them pinch me moments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and Peter as genius, obviously. We've said it many times. We've said it many. Another more. pinch me moment. Yeah. He was awesome and can so I, nice. Can I just say that moment with Clara on the board was actually improv, improv from him, and that just perfectly explains how amazing he is. Mm. Um, I remember he was just like walking around and bouncing the ball and he spotted her name and he was he actually told the director like this would be a really good moment for him to remember Clara um, oh. <laughs> um, oh. so that just it's a perfect like honestly it was so good for us to just sit back and watch yeah. and just see how he creates like when you get a script you sort of feel like you have to just follow the rules of the script when mm. actually the script is just the foundation and you can work around it obviously try to stick to the dialogue as much as possible but Peter would just sort of take the script, obviously amazing with like knowing everything, but he'll create just these moments of mm. genius just from his improv, and that was one of the special moments that he just he created. He also did that in the prom when he's on stage and he comes out going, dying well, and he's got all these side CDs in his hand from like be- behind the DJ deck, and he's just like, <laughs> and he lobs this CD across the stage like a boomerang, and that was all him, and he just comes up with stuff to play with, and um, yeah, he's really creative and just mm-hmm. a blast to work with. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey. Who do you think the next Doctor Who should be? Oh. oh. I actually, like, f- if it was to be a female, I would love for it to be Catherine Kelly. Honestly, <laughs> oh, I yeah, feel like right. she would make such an epic... I, I just feel like she's just... Su- her personality would just fit perfectly. And I feel like everyone would really connect with her. Because mm. that's really important, like, with a Doctor, especially with Doctor Who fans, it's like, I've noticed they're very passionate and very hard to please, but once you please them, you're in the game. And with doctors, obviously it's a very touchy subject, once a new doctor, it has to be done right and everyone's got their opinions, but I feel like Catherine Kelly as a person, as an actress, I feel like a lot of people would would support her and, you know. This person isn't in the mix and I don't think it would ever happen, Um, but I think Gabriel Garcia Bernal would be amazing. He's just like bopping around and doing all this stuff would be really cool. Um, from the people who I heard were in the mix, and I don't know if it was just a rumour, but um, Olivia Coleman would be amazing. I like and I think Greg like. Austin will make a future doctor, an amazing future doctor. Oh, I honestly yeah, believe that. I, 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 no, I honestly him, no. believe he's, that. He's, he, I've heard he's a real, you know, he's not, he's not a nice guy, Greg, Greg he's Austin. A, he's a, <laughs> I wouldn't work with him myself. But. Also, the person I mentioned, if you don't know his name, is the, <coughs> is it Mozart in the Jungle? Is that what it's called? That program? No. But yeah, oh. that is who I'm talking about. Um, oh God, it's, it's such an, in, it's the, I don't think anyone's going to be happy with just about anything, honestly, because it's such an individual thing. Um, and I, I know a lot of people really didn't weren't happy with Peter coming in, but now everyone loves it. And now look at him. He's and I look at him. So I, 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 I don't know. I really, if again, if it was to be a woman, which I'd absolutely love to see a, a female doctor. Um, um, who am I thinking of? Imelda Staunton, I think, will be fun. She would be cool. Yeah. I just saw her in, in the theatre. Also, Sophie Okonedo would be awesome as well. Uh, I think we're all go, going towards a female doctor. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think it has I feel to like, be I don't a female know, doctor, with, as some people are yeah, saying. I just feel like it's too touchy. For, it's, 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 not one, it's such a hard question, because it's just... If it's going to be a female doctor, it needs to be the right female doctor. It's not, yeah. They need to be the doctor, not a female doctor. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. They, 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 they shouldn't be hired because they're a woman. Yeah. If they are a female doctor, they need to be the right doctor. Yeah. yeah. Preach, sister. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hey. You look wicked. Thank you. Um, uh, oh, great. Yeah. Sorry, I've just, <laughs> I've just thrown you. Uh, I wondered what your favourite part of the story was, whether that be a character arc or an underlying theme. Because there's so much amazing stuff going on the whole time in the story. I mean, Mine was um, Charlie's shift in personality. Like at the beginning, he's this really like awkward guy who who's neat. Charlie. Uh, Charlie. Oh, I thought 
you're talking about yourself Charlie. not no, just no. like the whole show cool no 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 I'm talking Sorry. about a character like personally I love this like for example he starts off really nice and then you can sort of see as episodes go on there's this side that comes out to him like this royalty prince side that you just get to see glimpses of and towards the end especially in episode <laughs> 6 when he's just like what did you say when you're basically like, you know who would win this fight? Like, I would. Yeah. And he, just the way he says it, it's just like, wow, this guy's dangerous. And I love that going from that sort of awkward guy to that powerful, dangerous guy who you don't know what he's capable of. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, now talk yeah. about Ram. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I won't, it was, I, I, it was amazing being able to do that. And I've always wanted to be able to do something like that. So that was an honor. Um, but so uh, I'll be different to that. And I'll say, um, I really liked uh, Jordan coming more into it. That was what I was going to say. Ah, Rude. Do it. <laughs> yeah, seeing more of Mateo. Because he wasn't meant to be um, more... Uh, the first block we filmed was episodes one, two, and three. Um, and he wasn't even in episode two. And that was kind of how it was meant to be. It was meant to be like a, quite a small a guest lead, essentially. Um, but because he was so awesome and... Patrick loved him and we all loved him and he just worked. Yeah. He got more he came more and more into it. Um and so seeing his progression, his development was really good. Yeah. I think also the group dynamic, how that changes. Like obviously at first we we're in the same school, but we're not friends and we're just thrown together because of this situation and seeing how that changes and how relationships develop in the in um the group and things like that and, and how that's constantly changing and evolving um, given how they're all growing and learning all these skills is cool and April's got a pretty badass character arc it's going from um, kind of a nice girl who everyone assumes they can just kind of step all over to threatening her dad with ginormous swords <laughs> and, and becoming the king of, uh, of the Shadowkin yeah that's um, it's quite an arc yeah. We've got time for this last question here. Hello. Hey. <laughs> um, my question is this time, uh, I watched a show called Orphan Black. No. Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the lead actress plays loads of different uh, characters and friends. I was wondering, how do you think your characters would react if they found out they had a clone? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I've done that noise a lot today. So like, oh, oh, oh. Um, should I go first? Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, I think Charlie would love it. I think it would just be like, oh, oh, this is this is the friend I've been looking for. Oh. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is. What, I get, are you, what are you trying to say? Yeah, exactly. You, you guys, are, it's basically, I'm just trying to say he's completely egocentric, and it's also he, he just love himself so much. Um, yeah, I think he'd, he'd bloody love it. Yeah. I, I don't think Ram. I think Ram would get a bit. Off, bit jealous, a bit like your clone can manage all of your tens of thousands of girlfriends. Oh, oh, oh April's. <laughs> what, what, what would I, I do? do? What would you do? One ram for the for all the blood. One ram for all the for all the girlfriends. Yeah. One ram for the football. Yeah, you saw it, mate. Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. I think April's. She's not consistent, so. Um, I think it would get quite confusing because she's constantly changing and as um, the heart kind of phases in and out and she develops a bit more of Korokina so I think it would be a right head fuck. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm back bombshell. <laughs> I can't believe the last word of the interview I said was fuck. <laughs> And so you repeat it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Just so that we can get away with it not being that then. Um, if you each could create your own Doctor Who monster, <laughs> what would it be? Oh, oh. That is, you could create, create any one. monster that you wanted to appear on class and you had to battle it, what would it be and why? Uh, uh, sorry, to create one or you yeah, can make yeah. one, literally choose whatever you wanted. It doesn't have to be an existing one, it's brand new. You're creating this monster. And okay. Stay in the Hooniverse as one. A fidget spinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's already infiltrated. No, but that would be lives. really cool. I think, I think someone in the Doctor Who could pull it off and then it'll make the people scared of fidget spinners and it'll be perfect. <laughs> I'd, I'd like. 
I love I sort of Lovecraftian thing. I think uh, Lovecraft hasn't made enough of an appearance in TV and film. Um, so, thank you. Yeah, Cthulhu. yeah, something Cthulhu, something that's just existentially horrific. Um, I think would be really fun. I love that dark, real dark stuff. So, yeah. Hmm. I I love Hammer Horror, and I kind of the first films I started watching ever was Hammer Horror films. So I think um, something that uh, kind of goes back to that, like quite a quite a predictable monster. Um, Rather than you know, like we've got the petals, which are so unsuspecting. But I want to see, I want to see like some of the old Hollywood style monsters. Yeah. Wow, well, that is the end. I mean, the you monsters. just wanted to end it on a on a different note, didn't Thank you? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks so Thank much. You. And Sophie. Thank you so much, guys. Just guys.